this video, we're going to be taking a look at some consecutive integer problems. These type of problems are typically found in an Algebra 1 class. All right, the way the story problems are going to be set up, you're going to either be told that you're working with consecutive integers or consecutive odd integers or consecutive even integers. So we're going to take a look at each of those and see what it looks like when we define those variables. All right, so we're going to have consecutive integers first. All right, so that would be an example of maybe say seven, eight, nine. Okay, those are consecutive integers because one comes right after the other one. All right, now if I let X be my seven right there, all right, what would I have to do to get to the next consecutive integer? Well, I would take X and I would add one to it. So that would be X plus one. All right, how would I get to nine if I start with X being seven? Well, to get to nine, I would have to add two. All right, so when we define our variables for consecutive integers, we're going to define them as x, x plus one, x plus two, x plus three, all right, because they are consecutive. All right, now consecutive odd or even integers, consecutive, and I'm going to do odd slash even because algebraically, this looks the same way. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, so let's do what would consecutive um, odd integers look like? Well, I could do seven and then nine and then 11. All right, those would be consecutive odd integers. If I did, you know, six, eight, 10, those would be consecutive even integers. Okay, so the question is how far apart are each of these versus how far apart are each of those? All right, so again, if I let, say, my first number be defined by x, how do I get to the next odd integer? Well, I would have to add 2. So this one would have to be defined as x plus 2. If I let my first even integer also be x, okay, how would I get to the next even integer? All right, I would add 2 to it. All right, to starting with x as 7, how would I get to the the next odd integer, well, I'm going to have to add 4. All right, same thing here. If I started with x being 6, how would I get to the next consecutive even integer? I would have to take my 6 and add 4 to it. All right, so because consecutive even and consecutive odd integers differ by 2, we define our variables as x, x plus 2, x plus 4. Same way for both even and odd because of the way the numbers are. They differ by two. When we're dealing with consecutive integers, they differ by one. So x, x plus one, x plus two, x plus three. All right, understanding how you define those variables is extremely important. All right, now we're gonna do a uh, setup here of probably a pretty straightforward integer problem to start with. Okay, let's just say that the problem says the sum of two consecutive even integers is 118. Find the integers. All right, so that's pretty, pretty standard. Okay, for a consecutive integer type of problem that you're going to see in Algebra 1. All right, now the key here is you've got to look and decide well, what kind of consecutive integers are you talking about? All right, consecutive even integers. So that's going to help me define my variables. We're going to do pretty much three steps. We're always going to define our variables. We're going to write an equation and then we're going to solve that equation. All right, so my first step is always going to be define the variables. Okay, I know I've got two consecutive even integers that I'm going to deal with. Okay, so my first integer, we're always going to let be x. And I want consecutive even integers, so that means I've got to be skipping two numbers. So my second integer is going to have to be defined as x plus 2. Okay, so that's the first step you're going to do to define your variables. All right, then you are going to write the equation. All right, this is where you go back, you read the story problem, and then you come up with the equation. All right, the sum of two consecutive even integers 
is, so there's my equal sign, 118. Okay, so here are my two consecutive even integers. So if I sum these or I add these two up and I set them equal to 118, I have written an equation which I can solve. So there's my first integer being added to my second one, x plus two, the sum of those two integers will be equal to 118. All right, from there then, you've got your equation. It matches what your story problem says, so now you can solve that equation and figure out what the answer is. Okay, so I'm just gonna rewrite the equation here. x plus x plus two equals 118. All right, that set of parentheses really has no bearing on this. I can still add these two like terms, so I'm gonna have a two x plus a two equals 118. I'm gonna subtract two from both sides of the equation. Two X is equal to 116. I'm gonna divide both sides by two. X is gonna be equal to 58. All right, now ask yourself, is 58 an even number? I was supposed to have consecutive even integers. It is an even number, so I'm good to go. All right, now to answer or to have a solution here to the problem, it says find the integers, once you define both of them, I'm gonna take this X, I'm gonna plug it back into my first one, which will give me 58. Then I'm gonna take the 58, plug it into the second integer, 58 plus two is gonna be 60. So my two even consecutive integers are 58 and 60. Okay, so pretty straightforward. This process, if you follow this process, all right, you define your variables, you write your equation, and then you solve all right, it's, it's pretty straightforward. The finding the variables are going to be extremely important. All right, now let's maybe do a little bit more challenging problem. Let's take a look at, maybe say something that's like five times the smallest of three consecutive oops, odd integers is seven more than twice the largest. Find and this time, maybe instead of asking you to find all of them, maybe it's just going to say find the largest integer. All right, so again, you're going to look at your story problem and you're going to see, okay, so what type of consecutive integers are you dealing with? All right, clearly we are doing consecutive odd integers. All right, but again, odd integers, what do they do? They skip every other one. So the way we define the variables in this is going to be the exact same way we define them when they are consecutive even integers. Okay, so first step is always going to be define the variables. Okay, so when I define the variables, all right, it says five times the smallest of three consecutive integers, so I'm going to have three. So I'm going to have a first integer. I'm going to have a second one and a third one. So first integer, second integer, third one. We always let that first one be X. Since I'm dealing with odd consecutive integers, they're gonna skip, all right? So I'm gonna have an X plus two, and then I've gotta skip again, I'll have the X plus four. All right, once those are defined, then you can focus on writing the equation. Okay, so we need to go back up to the story problem and read to see what it says, five times the smallest of three consecutive integers is, all right, there's our equal sign, all right, is seven more than twice the largest. All right, so work on one side of the equation and then the other side. All right, so to the left of the equal sign, five times the smallest. All right, well, this one would be the smallest, so five times the smallest would be a five X, five times the smallest. All right, is, now I'm ready for the is, seven more than twice the largest. Okay, so that's algebraic expression. This one is the largest. All right, I need twice the largest, so two times this quantity, and then add seven. So twice the largest, two times the x plus four, and then seven more than that. 
Okay, so this one, the equation was a little bit more challenging. Okay, once you have that equation written, you can recheck, double check, make sure that you're good there. And then we want to solve it. All right, so I'm going to rewrite. I'll have the 5x is equal to the parentheses x plus 4 plus 7. All right, on that right-hand side, I'm going to choose to distribute the 2, so 2x plus 8, and then we have the plus 7 there on the end. All right, on this one, I probably am going to just go ahead and add the, the 8 and the 7 there, so 5x is equal to 2x plus a 15. Okay, and then now, can I move 2x to the left-hand side? I can subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. So that I've got all my x's on one side, I'm going to end up with a 3x is equal to 15, which means x equals 5. Okay, now again, go back up. You were supposed to find consecutive odd integers. Is 5 an odd integer? Yes, it is. Okay, so then that means we're probably right here. So I can come back as a solution now. All right, the question just asks for the largest integer. Find the largest integer. So we really don't want to give all three of them because it didn't ask for that. All right, x is 5. That means my first one's going to be 5. My second one's going to be 7. And then the next one's going to be 9. And the question says, what is the largest integer? So really my only answer is 9. Okay, I go ahead, plug them back in. I can find what those three consecutive odd integers are. Okay, but in answering the question, I am writing a solution of nine right there. All right, so basically just two quick examples of consecutive odd integers. All right, definitely thanks for watching. And if the videos are helping, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Thanks.